Whoa! That's a close-up. High fans of high quality entertainment. Hi there. Welcome to the video in which I answer some of the questions that were asked in the Ask Larry Graves video I posted a couple of days ago. So here we go. And if your question is not answered in this video, then I most likely answered it in the Ask Larry Graves video. There were quite a lot of questions, and these are some of the best ones that I picked out. Thank you. Carrie wrote it. Hi Larry, love your channel. It's totally awesome. Have you ever had a supernatural experience? And yes, I have. Uh, I don't know if I want to go into the details of it right now because I'm thinking of doing a video on my ASMR channel soon regarding the experience. But I did, I, to quickly tell the story without going in, into the details, I had a vision and the next day I had a vision and I had a choice to live or die in the vision. And the next day, I had a car accident. And I, of course, I think I lived. But it was uh, pretty strange. But it happened. So subscribe to my ASMR channel, and I'll be doing a video on that experience soon. Dolan's McQueen wrote, Hi, Larry. What was the very worst experience you ever went through in your life and how did it affect and change you? There have been many. I mean, everybody goes through bad times in their life. My, my marriage break up when my uh, second wife decided to leave me. My first wife when she left me because she passed away from cancer at the age of 40. But I, I think... Uh, Probably the first life-changing experience I had was when I was a teenager. The stories are in my uh, Life Stories playlist that's on my front page of Canadian Stud Muffin. It's, there's two depression videos talking about depression. And uh, when I was like 17, 18, my mom was having nervous breakdowns and I found her one morning with her wrist slit and uh, that's kind of like when whoa you know like there's bad things that happen in life because before that it was basically good things happening in my life nickelodeon man 95 productions wrote are there any bands out there that you feel are underappreciated by music fans i mean there's many i mean i'm sure there's bands that you guys and ladies like that maybe never got as popular as you hoped they would. Uh, the big one for me is Sparks, who I've loved since 1974. They've been making music since 1971. Uh, but there's lots. I mean, the Northern Pikes, one of Canada's greatest bands. Y even a, a group like the Guess Who, they're, they're known... I mean, they, they had great success even in the States, but they're still known as a singles band when I think their albums are just as damn good as, as all of their hit singles. Mike Bass wrote, Do you have any special or funny childhood memories of your father? Uh, actually, I, there, there's nothing particular that sticks out except uh, for the person I am today. I'm, I'm, you know, basically proud of who I am as you should be. And both of my parents were just very respectful of other people and uh, really nice people. I think they were pretty honest. Uh, and so that's what I, I remember about my father and my mother is they were just really good people. There There is a uh, short video after my Dad passed away. Something, another kind of a spiritual thing happened with me, and 
some of you might find it kind of stupid, but I don't. I mean, it, it means a lot to me. And the video is called, I think, Yes, We Have No Banana. So just do a search for it on my front page. There's a little search box and put in bananas and you should be able to find it. Ethan Garcia wrote, What made you want to start a YouTube channel and who are some of your favorite YouTubers? It's just when YouTube, when I noticed YouTube in 2006 and I had already been making some videos on this other site called Acid Planet, which was a uh, loop-based music site, and I had lots of fun there for a few years. And so I just gradually, you know, went over to YouTube and not thinking, oh, I'm going to make this some sort of career or anything. I was just posting videos and just like anybody else starting out, I'd have like five subscribers and two views. Uh, some of my favorite YouTubers, I have so many, I want to actually do a video at some point. Again, I, I might have done one in the past. Uh, but Ed Bassmaster, although he hasn't posted as much lately, he had a TV show or has a TV show. Mediocre Films, uh, Jack Vale, although I unsubscribed from him because maybe I'll get into it, to that in, in a uh, video. A few more. There, there's a really good uh, food. There's a couple of food review channels that I really love, so I'll promote them too. Garrett Munton, have you ever done a live chat or ever wanted to do a live chat? Do you still upload videos on Daily Motion? Will you ever re-upload some of the videos on YouTube that you uploaded only on Daily Motion? Uh, regarding a live chat, I did do live chats. Uh, when I was in my second marriage, and they, they might actually still be public on YouTube. And I just, I've never really totally enjoyed doing live chats. Even, say for instance, on, on Facebook, you can chat live with a friend in private. It's just, I've, I've got no interest in that. But that's not to say, at some point, I might do a live chat. And regarding Daily Motion, on Daily Motion, at one point, I think I had 32 million total video views, but I closed my channel because I was getting fed up with uh, some of my very tame comedy videos getting flagged. And then I would write to Daily Motion, and after a day or two, they'd unflag it. And it just got, went on and on and on. And of course, there was the uh, comedy video called XXX Video, which had uh, over 20 million views, and it used to get flagged, and then Daily Motion would unflag it, but it would just be constant. It just, it's like, I just deleted the channel, but that's not to say I won't go back to Daily Motion at some time. And I don't think I posted that many videos on Daily Motion I just basically copied what I had on YouTube onto Daily Motion. Uh, David Gina or Gena. Larry, I lost my daughter several years ago to cancer. I'm very sorry to hear that. How did you deal with the loss of your wife? I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It, it's the same as uh, I lost my mom when I was 18. And to me, it's still a shock. It's like it'll always be a shock. Same with my wife Nancy. It's, it's like, it's almost like a dream. It's like, and, you know, all there are are memories. And uh, so, you know, you just have to go on with your life. That's the main thing. You have to, of course, cry and be sad and everything. And, but you have to be strong enough to go on with your life and just live your life because that's the way they would have wanted, wanted it. In fact, I remember having talks with Nancy when we were both very healthy and saying if one of us passed away, go on with your life, get remarried if you want, like be happy or try to be happy. Beetleman69, did you collect LPs back when you were growing up and if so, what happened to them? Yeah, just like any other 
person that loved music in the 60s and 70s and 80, early 80s. Uh, I bought vinyl records. Uh, I bought hundreds of them. And I had a pretty good collection at one point. But of course, when CDs came around, whatever year that was, I sold all of my vinyl records. And in a way, I still don't feel bad that I did that because, you know, things change. And, uh, and I, one person recently said, uh, why do you hate vinyl? And I don't hate vinyl. It's just, uh, it's too late in my life to start collecting vinyl rec records again. It's expensive. Uh, I'd have to buy a turntable, a nice stereo system. I mean, if I was a millionaire, then I'd have vinyl records for sure. I'd have a huge collection. And Liam 108 Guy wrote, what inspired you to make a YouTube channel, or what did you do before YouTube? Like I already mentioned, I was... I started out when the internet came along. I was writing humorous stories. Some of them you can see on my ASMR channel. Or I'm reading them on my ASMR channel. And from there I went to AssetPlanet.com and I used to do comedy songs with... Uh, loop-based music and also real musicians helping me out. I have a, uh, I actually have a CD on iTunes called Redneck Canadian with Eric Myers. He did all the music. And uh, so what inspired me to make a YouTube channel is I'm just a creative person and I enjoy it. It's what I love to do when I'm not working. GK35 Gaming do you think you will ever do a fan meetup? And what was the first Beatles song you've ever heard? I think maybe the first... Well, the first Beatles song I heard was probably I Saw Her Standing There. I don't remember. But it was when the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan Show. That's the first song they played. But I might have heard, possibly... I remember 45 of There's a Place that my sister had. So I don't know if that was before or after seeing the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show. And do you think you will ever do a fan meetup? I actually have been thinking of that for the last few weeks. Uh, I live in Ontario, and I was thinking maybe if I posted in a video or something, hey, I'll be at a certain spot there on a certain day at a certain time. Maybe a person will show up besides my girlfriend Karen. That would be kind of cool. So I might do that. Let me know in the comment section below if you would actually make the trip if you live in Australia, would you come over and meet me if I s schedule a meeting? Uh, RS Bad Endings, what is your job and what exactly do you do there? Also, where did you spend most of your life working doing? I work at McKesson Canada here in Trenton, Ontario. Uh, it's mainly scanning products. I have this uh, radio frequency device called an RF. And uh, I don't want to get into the details of it, but it's a pretty fun job. I really like the people. And where did you spend most of your life working? I worked at one place making plastic bags for 13 years. I was a security guard at Belleville General Hospital when I was young. Uh, I worked at Quaker Oats for a little bit. And a couple of other jobs. Matthew Higgins. Hi Larry, I've been curious for a while if you ever worked in radio or have ever been a DJ. I think I saw a video once where you mentioned it. Really appreciate these videos, thanks. I never worked as a radio DJ, but I did disc jockey for quite a few years. Uh, there's also a story on my ASMR channel, which is kind of a funny story about being a disc jockey and, and playing a wrong song at the wrong time. And I enjoyed that. And we started out with vinyl records. And when CDs came along, that was a real blessing. Uh, so I did that for off and on for quite a few years. Matt Keelan. Do you prefer CDs to digital downloads? Do you use services like Apple Music or Spotify? What is your opinion of vinyl? I've already mentioned vinyl. Uh, I use Spotify. That's my main thing is I listen to most music on Spotify. I'm actually thinking at some point of selling, not all of them, but 
a good chunk of my CDs because I never really listen to them. I listen to most music online these days. Uh, I would never sell, for instance, my Beatles CDs or Credence Clearwater Revival, but some of the other ones I would. So if anybody local is interested, just let me know. Even some of my box sets, I never play them. There's certain ones, like some of the McCartney box sets, I of course want to keep, but there's other ones, I'd sell them. Andromeda Galaxy. Can't believe you never saw Willy Wonka before. Did you enjoy it? Yes, it was good. How big of a music fan are you? Curious to know what other types of music you like or dislike, and perhaps talk about your experiences venturing into different genres. Thanks, Larry. I mainly just... I don't put music into a box, but of course I like rock music. I like some blues music. Uh, my favorite is Canned Heat. Country music, I like Old Country, Hank Snow, Johnny Cash. Uh, orchestral music. I mean, if I went to a, a concert and a, there was a, a big orchestra playing, I think I would love that, but I've, I've only maybe experienced that once. So, just music in gen general is good. I don't like new pop music or new country. Those are the two biggies for me. Darren Kang. Do you like the Rush Hour films with Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker? No. Thomas O'Keefe, what is Trenton, Ontario like? Well, it's just a regular small city. I think there's, I'd have to check on it. Under, I think it's under 20,000. And I'm going to, at some point in the next few weeks, do a tour of Trenton, Ontario and just talk about Trenton. Brown polyester shirt. If you ever decided to become a woman, what would your name be? Who would you hope to look like and how would you deal with those that mock you? Thanks, Larry. I don't want to be a woman. I don't. You've heard rumors. Those are just rumors, just people spreading nasty rumors about me. I do not want to be a woman. But if I was, I would name her Lorena. And she'd be blonde. Kind of like a, an Elizabeth Montgomery bewitched kind of... Uh, I apologize, I don't know if I can say this name. Santag Santago Curarty? Which is your favorite type of music? I mean, of all genres. And what kind of music do you play when you feel like sad? I'm curious about it. I love your videos. Thank you for these kind of opportunities to interact with your fans. We're interacting. It's fun. Interacting with my fans. My favorite genre, obviously, is just rock music. But, like I mentioned, I'm not stuck on rock music. If I feel sad, I think something like uh, uh, the Johnny Cash American Recordings, uh, the fourth one, uh, When the Man Comes Around, that one, uh, Lou Reed. Uh, actually, listening to sad, depressing music like Lou Reed's Berlin, after you've heard it, it actually, in a way, cheers you up. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Star Trek is better than Star Wars. Was there ever a celebrity or singer you had a crush on when you were younger or still possibly to this day? I have one, but wondering if you have one as well. I mentioned Elizabeth Montgomery from Bewitched, if some of you remember that show from the 60s. That was probably my first celebrity crush. And then, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha from The Brady Bunch, Marsha Brady. And those are the two biggies, I think, for me. Kilo Smash 550. What is the nicest compliment you've received on YouTube? The kind that makes you happy to do this channel and continue. Perhaps you've already answered a question like this. Cheers, Anthony. I, th I think possibly the ones where uh, it's not really a comment on YouTube. It's a personal message someone sends me on Facebook or in the YouTube message messages. And they just, I think it's for my life stories videos where I'm talking about, about depression and suicide and, and not even realizing when I did, really did those videos that it could 
help people, but I guess it has. And they've just been very uh, positive messages saying, wow, your, your video really made me think things over and and they thank me and everything, so that was nice. And then, of course, just the obvious, oh, I laugh uh, when I'm down, I always check out your videos, you cheer me up. Those kind of comments are always appreciated. Red Sam, opinion on the newer rock. I've tried, you know, I've listened to newer bands and people have sent me links to, oh, check out this band, and I listen, and that's good. I'm not saying it's not good, but Almost every new band is compared to some older band. And for instance, there might be a, a band that's kind of like Led Zeppelin. And you know what? I'll just listen to Led Zeppelin because that's what I, what I grew up with. It's just like uh, today's youth, uh, 20, 30 years from now, they're going to basically love the music that they're listening to now. Uh, that's my my opinion. They're going to be listening to Nickelback in 20 or 30 years. It's kind of sad. Sturmrast 50. I recently experienced the death of a close family member. Very sorry to hear that. I know you've been there too. What kind of advice do you have about acceptance and moving on without forgetting the person? As we all know, it's difficult. I've already basically said it. It's like you have to uh, just keep them in your memory and just you have to keep living. You know, you, it might suck, uh, especially at, you know, the first few weeks or whatever, but it's like you have to pick yourself up and keep going. Garrett Schmidt wrote, how do you like your job? Some Sometimes it's hard on me, uh, some of the jobs are, are pretty physical and I mean I'm almost 60 so it's kind of <laughs> there, there's days when I'm in, in a little bit of pain but overall I enjoy it it's not always like that and the people are great so I love my job and that's it thank you for the questions and I hope you enjoyed the answers and I apologize if I happen to miss somebody once in the blue moon I do I miss one or two of the questions but I'll have another one of these in a few months thank you for watching bye bye